Let's watch a Falcon 9 launch and study what we can learn from it. Orbital mechanics are the same for everyone. Countdown to liftoff. And the rocket travels straight up through the air. As it comes out of the clouds, a velocity of 649 kilometers per hour, I think we can see it starting to pitch over a little. We are T plus 43 seconds into flight. Falcon 9 has cleared the tower and is currently throttling down to prepare for max Q at around the T plus 1 minute and 12 second mark. Max Q is where the vehicle will experience the highest amount of aerodynamic pressures. Falcon 9 is supersonic. They call supersonic at 58 seconds with an altitude of 7,900 meters and a velocity of 1,151 kilometers per hour. Max Q. They called Max Q at 72 seconds, altitude 13,200 meters and speed 1,650 kilometers per hour. At this point, the ship will throttle back and minimize this force until it has climbed to a higher altitude where the air is not as dense and it will be safe to resume maximum thrust. Once you are through the shock wave and traveling above the speed of sound, the shock wave will chase your ship. Your ship is still compressing the air in front of it, however, and this compression is still creating dynamic pressure. Again, the symbol for dynamic pressure is Q. about 20 seconds away from main engine cut off the start of those three events happening in rapid succession. The rocket continues to climb. They are about to call main engine cut off or Miko. Main engine cut off. At 151 seconds with an altitude of 79,300 meters and a velocity of 7,154 kilometers per hour. Both the booster and the second stage coast for what I estimate to be about five seconds. Coming up in a few seconds, we should have the fairing deployed. In the ignition. And I estimate another eight seconds coast time after separation for a total of 13 seconds between main engine cutoff and second engine ignition. And there you can see the two fairing halves have separated and fallen away from the vehicle, exposing the 143 spacecraft to the vacuumless phase. The booster goes back to land, and the second stage fires at 164 seconds to go on into orbit. What else can we learn? We know that the rocket went supersonic at an altitude of 7,900 meters. We can look in a table and see that the temperature at 5,000 meters is 255 Kelvin, and at 10,000 meters it is 223 Kelvin. That means the temperature is falling about 0.0064 Kelvin per meter gain in altitude. At 7,900 meters, the temperature should be about 242K. If we put this into our air density calculator at omnicalculator.com, we get 33,218 pascals of pressure. We start at sea level with 101,325 pascals, and at just 7,900 meters up, we have lost two-thirds of our atmospheric pressure. The next milestone for the first stage will be its, its re-entry burn. Falcon 9 needs to execute an entry burn to slow itself down before hitting the dense parts of the atmosphere. Uh, without this burn, relying on the atmosphere alone to slow Falcon 9 down will put unnecessary strain on the rocket. And that entry burn is coming up at around the T plus 7 minute and 47 minute mark, just a few minutes from now. We know that acceleration equals the change in velocity over the change in time. The change in velocity is 0 to 7,154 kilometers per hour, but we need meters per second. We multiply by 1,000 and divide by 3,600 to convert kph into meters per second. Or we can just divide by 3.6 and we get 1,987 meters per second. Now we divide the change in velocity, 1,987 meters per second, by the change in time, 151 seconds. 
and we get a true acceleration of 13.16 meters per second squared. Now if we assume that the booster was fighting gravity drag the entire way, we would have to add 9.81 meters per second squared to the needed thrust calculation to have this performance. You can see some periodic bursts of gas from the first stage. That is nitrogen from our attitude, attitude control systems. They help to orient the first stage as it continues to make its descent back towards Earth. And as, as we get closer to uh, the Earth, you'll start to notice those honeycomb-like structures on the left-hand side of the screen start to move and pivot. Those are, are, are our hypersonic grid fins, and those help to steer the first stage back um, as it returns back to Earth. As for the second stage, back performance looks nominal. Just a few seconds after we finish the stage one entry burn, we'll be shutting off the second stage Merlin vacuum engine and enter a small coast phase. Again, we'll need to relight this engine later on in the mission to get to our eventual destination in orbit. Stage one FTS is saved. We are about 45 seconds away from that stage one entry burn. Uh, for the entry burn, it is a three engine burn. So three of the nine Merlin engines on the first stage will relight and start to slow the stage down before it hits the denser parts of the Earth's atmosphere. Stage one entry burn startup. And there is the entry burn. Three of the nine Merlin engines have relit. This burn is expected to last for about 30 seconds. Second stage internal guidance. Stage one entry burn shut down. You can see on screen the entry burn has concluded, and in just a few seconds we should be here on the call out for a second engine cutoff, but we'll shut down the second stage M back engine. FTS is saved. There's the second stage. Also signal stage one, Cape expected. Second stage has shut down its engine. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we are going to be attempting to recover the booster for a fifth time no, no, on, our, on our drone ship. Of course, I still love you. The first stage has one more burn left, the landing burn, and it, it begins just before we touch down and provides the booster with a soft descent before we land. That should be starting up anytime now. And we did get confirmation of the second stage that it did reach a good parking orbit. Stage one landing like deploy. Stage two, Cape Canaveral expected. And 
and Falcon 9 returns safely once again. That is the fifth time for this particular booster and the 73rd recovery of an orbital class rocket. A great way to start off the mission and a great way to start off the Sunday. We're now going to coast for the next 45 minutes or so while we wait for SES-2 or second engine start number two. We're going to leave you with an animation that shows you where we're at in the coast phase and we'll see you back here at the T plus 54 minute mark. Welcome back to the Transporter 1 mission. If you're just joining us, Falcon 9 lifted off at 10 a.m. Eastern from Cape Canaveral Space Force Station, had successful stage separation, we landed our first stage on our drone ship for the fifth time, and successfully completed our first and second stage burn. On screen right now is a view of the second stage MVAC engine. We are waiting to relight that engine for the second and the final burn. Uh, this burn will be a quick one, lasting only two seconds. We're expecting that burn to start uh, in just a few seconds here. And if we don't have footage of it, we should be able to get confirmation over the, the nets. Start off, uh, start up, and then cut off. Now we're waiting for confirmation of a good orbit on that second stage. Nominal payload orbit insertion. And there's the call out that we want. Uh, that is a confirmation of a good orbit. Now let's evaluate our orbit. When we first get into orbit, the highest point of our orbit should be on the opposite side of the Earth from the completion of our last engine burn. Think of it like throwing a ball into the air. Engine cutoff is when the ball leaves your hand with the most kinetic energy. It rises and slows and reaches a highest point or apogee. This highest point also should be the slowest. The ball on Earth stops at the top of its arc and comes back down building speed as it goes. The satellite should never drop below orbital velocity, but it does slow. Now this orbit will stay elliptical unless we do another engine burn at the apogee or highest point in the orbit to bring the perigee or lowest point of the orbit to a higher altitude. If second engine cutoff was perigee, or the lowest altitude point, and we are in low Earth orbit, we should find apogee around 45 minutes later, since a full orbit is around 90 minutes in low Earth orbit. Our second engine cutoff time was at 8 minutes 45 seconds. 45 minutes later means we should start looking around 53 minutes 45 seconds. Here we find an altitude of 538,000 meters and a velocity of 27,310 kilometers per hour or 7,581 meters per second. Much higher and a little slower as we expected. We are in fact at more than twice the altitude of when we cut off our engine burn. Now if we want to circularize our orbit, we have to bring the perigee, which is on the other side of the Earth from where our ship is now, up to the same altitude we currently have. That means we have to light the engine again. At 54.54 we see the engine ignite again. At 54.57 it is clearly off, so just a few seconds. They said this would be a two second burn on the call out. Since we circularize the orbit here, this should be near the apogee. The engine cuts off and they deploy the satellites. Next up will be the deployment of our 133 spacecraft on board the mission, which will occur over an 18 minute period. And as a reminder, today's mission is the first dedicated small sat rideshare program. I hope this lesson has clarified things. I know going through this awakened some neurons and refreshed these factors in my mind. To those who made it all the way to the end, you are truly dedicated to space science, and I salute you. Please don't forget to like and subscribe, help support us on Patreon if you can, and stay safe at Astro Proterra.